All right, welcome everybody. Um, uh, welcome to the CTD Learning Center webinar um, with Beth Poff, Exploration of Apps and Other Resources for Supporting Language and Literacy in Young Children. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Beth and she can get started. Thank you everyone for attending. Hi everybody, how are you today? Um, I hope I have, I think I see some familiar names um, that were around um, last week. Um, and I'm excited that you decided that it was worth coming back for. I, um, we are uh, going to be talking today about um, apps and um, other resources um, for uh, supporting language and literacy. Um, so I am really excited that um, that you guys are all here, and we will go ahead and get ourselves started. Um, so I'm just arranging a little something on my screen that I'm having some trouble accessing consistently. So um, I did want to remind um, or everybody, I, uh, there's a couple of um, links that are on the, um, you should be able to see the web links that are on the side. So all of the apps that I am referring to are in my, on my Pinterest page. And all of the articles or resources or research that I referred to either um, this week or last week or next week for that matter are all in the on the Digo um, page that's linked there. So you should be able to get to any of those things at any time. So uh, with that being said, I'll go ahead and um, start start moving us along. Okay. So. At the end of the webinar, there's going to be a brief survey. And if you would like a certificate of participation, just make sure that you enter your email address at the end of the survey. Um, and it really helps both CTD and myself know what you like and what you don't like. Um, so a question for everyone. I want you guys to think a little bit about how has technology impacted how you communicate and read over the last five years? So use the chat window and let me know. Um, so I see Tammy's typing. Um, I want today to be um, interactive. I'm going to ask you guys to use the chat window a number of times. I hope you will um, be comfortable contributing because uh, it definitely makes things a lot more fun. Um, so I see people typing. Multiple attendees are typing. Um, I know. Let's see, Tammy says, read on Kindle, communicate with text and cell phone more, Skype and FaceTime. So those are all things that you've done. Um, seems like everything is online. I know I used to have rows and rows and rows of books, print books, um, on my bookshelf. And um, they would. I'm a huge, huge reader. Um, and um, I now instead have them on my iPad. Maureen listens, um, reads via Kindle or listens via Audible. Oh, I love Audible. It's one of my favorites. Communicating online on Twitter and social media. Kim goes to the library a lot less. Um, Bernadine um, texts and FaceTime, uses a Nook. So things have changed. Like five years ago, there was no iPad believe it or not. So uh, iPad came out a little less than five years ago. Um, and while there was, might have been your iPods, and you might have been listening, and you might have been doing some things, that was when the iPad came out. Um, and a lot of things have evolved um, with that. I Five years ago, I'm not sure if I had a Twitter account. I'm trying to think. It was 2009. So our, the way we as adults have um, really change the way that we uh, communicate and, and interact with literacy tools over the last five years. And if you think about the population that we're talking about, some of them were not even around five years ago. So they're, um, they're, what they're being exposed to is much, much different than even children who might be 10 years old um, today, what they had from the very, very beginning. Um, and, Books are still awesome. Um, still love to have books in print. I, I love them too. I love not having to hold them. I love being able to prop up a book. My carpal tunnel wrists appreciate the way that I'm able to read on, on my iPad instead. So um, 
that's just sort of to frame today's conversation that things have changed a lot in the world of communication and the world of how we interact with print resources or text-based resources um, in the last few years. So today we are going to um, explore a variety of uh, developmentally appropriate interactive apps um, that can be used to support um, uh, communication and interactive language skills of young children. We're going to look at apps and media that support the development of early literacy, both reading and writing skills in young children in alignment with best practices. And we're going to um, continue to talk about the difference between technology for enhancement of learning and assistive technology within that context of a universally designed for learning early childhood environment. So some of the stuff that we're going to do. So last week, we spent a lot of time, most of the time, really talking about what makes an effective early childhood app. And I wanted to make sure to review that, that there might be some folks that weren't um, on last week's webinar, so that we're all kind of coming things from the same place. And what I find it's really critical is that an app be open-ended to support play and problem solving that it promotes literacy, language, and vocabulary development, also problem solving, and we're going to look more at that next week, and play, um, without drill and kill, my words, includes rich, engaging activities that invite a high degree of interactivity and control by the user so that the user is in control, not the technology being in control, and that um, there's as much movement as possible. That just because we're holding an iPad doesn't mean that we can't get engaged and involved. That it enhances and encourages interactions with adults or peers, rather than it just being a solitary exploration. I think it's critical that the media that we use is culturally diverse and it's free of stereotypes, um, and that it meets a developmental need for children. And so just to kind of have that in the back of our heads as we start looking at some different apps, to be thinking critically about how those apps meet that criteria. Uh, so today, we are going to examine some, what I would like to say is well-suited apps that thoughtfully focus on language and literacy skill development, and that offer rich and engaging activities that are highly interactive that offer authentic problem situations that require strategic thinking, and that provide feedback and scaffolding so that with repeated use, a player gets better and is offered new challenges. They're not just doing the same thing each time. Um, and that it makes use of the latest technology and has merit that's free from like the extraneous distracting and cute sounds and graphics. That's not the point of the technology, is all the bells and whistles, that it's really much more than that. So let's talk about apps, using apps to build language. I listed some ways that when I think about building language that I think apps can be useful. Vocabulary, turn-taking, expanding communicative intent, initiating language, encouraging expressive output, supporting comprehension, and augmenting oral language. But does anyone have anything to add to that list? It would be great to hear. Anybody has any other ways that they use language, that they, they use apps in their world to build language? And if not, that's OK. OK, so we're going to keep going, even though I can't quite bring up what I want to bring up right this second. It worked 10 minutes ago. T storytelling and descriptive language, Candace said. So absolutely, those are critical things with language, especially um, as kids start moving into the idea of building their literacy skills, that they have to have the language in order to engage in storytelling. So let's talk about the most kind of basic things that are available pretty much on any device without any uh, cost associated or any downloads or anything like that. And that's just the idea of, of photos and um, video tools. And there is recent research out that uh, really shows that kids who are given the opportunity to uh, engage in interactions via video 
understand that they are that the person on the other end is real, that they get that, um, that when they are given that opportunity to interact, and that there can be some real value and merit to being able to FaceTime or Skype, and it can positively, when they are communicating with a live person on the other side of that screen, that it can positively impact learning. So um, Jackie, we're going to take a look at that um, video one. Um, if you want to pop that over. So we're going to take a look at a little girl um, and whose daddy was um, okay. out of town and had the opportunity. Uh, uh, What's going on? Okay, so that our little friend there, a little short clip. Um, I don't know if everybody caught sort of all the all the nuances there of her of her interaction. Um, she obviously was. It, extremely excited. Um, it wasn't just seeing a picture of Daddy. She knew Daddy was there. Um, and um, she might not have been able to put that into words. Mama says, where is Daddy? And she cocks her hand, and she's like, I don't know, or maybe it's here. Um, but that you know, she really responded. She wasn't interacting with Mom and talking to him about Daddy. She was talking to Daddy. Um, so just a nice example of how real that is um, for a child. We talked last week about the importance of um, that 2D to 3D, um, that 3D to 2D transfer where kids need to, to know that something is real um, in order to, to get to it, um, in order to, to access and understand it. Um, I'm going to go on to the next video, though, and show um, our same little friend, so if you can move that video over again. Um, and now she's actually interacting with a, um, she's actually interacting with <laughs> Who's in the barn? I don't know, let's see. Hey. Owl. Owl. Hi, Owl. Hi, Owl. Who's in the barn? Who's in the barn? Open. Peyton, open. Horse. Nay. Horse. So you can see there how Peyton was really very interactive. She had um, control over, you know, over the environment. She was doing this and absolutely a um, uh, engaged in the interaction with mom. In, in order to do this. Um, and that's really what we are looking for. Um, I am going to switch in just a second to share my screen with you. We're going to take a look at some different apps. So that was really just about you know um, that play in that language. So what did you see happening in that clip? What kinds of, what kinds of things did you guys see in that clip um, that we just saw? with Peyton. I, I gave you a couple of things. I'm just so excited right now because my my iPad is actually mirroring on my computer. It wasn't doing that a couple of minutes ago. Sigh of relief. Phew. So Stacy's typing. She's interacting with the gestures. Yeah, that same, it's like you can tell that must be like a gesture of hers, that little open hands um, that she's able to interact with. And this is a little girl who has some um, language needs, um, who is being served through um, our Infants and Toddlers program. 
her mother is actually also a a provider, and so when we started using iPads in our practice, she was really eager to apply it with her own with her own child. She's vocalizing, um, so really seeing some nice rich. Um, what was important about the mom part of things with this? Was this like, okay, here, Peyton, go play with this while I see the laundry basket in behind. Go play with this while I get the laundry done. Um, it wasn't really about that, right? It was really about you know that critical that critical interaction. So I'm gonna I'm gonna respond to your um, chat uh, to your text as your chat your chat as you type them in, but just to not leave everybody hanging, um, let's focus a little bit right now on some um, AAC apps, some augmentative communication apps um, for early communication. There is a lot out there, um, and I really want to stress that what I'm showing you today is simply the very, very, very tip of the iceberg, um, and that um, these are by no means like the official recommendations of what you should be using for an augmentative communication app, that there um, is a lot a lot out there, and, and you really want to make sure that you're using the right app on the right tool, maybe it's not even an app, with with a child, um, but to be able to show you a few things. So I'm going to, we're going to look at a few different things, kind of from a, from highly complex to um, at a much simpler level. So one of the um, ones that's out there um, is called LAMP. It's by Pranky Romick, um, and um, it, uh, there's, a, there's a nice link there for a, a really good summary of how the LAMP app supports language development. And I think it's really key, especially with young children, that it's, it's not necessarily about um, replacing oral language, but it's about bridging to oral language. Um, often for, for young children who aren't speaking yet, you don't want to leave them without a method. And, and we can use sign and gestures and, and um, pictures and low tech, um, and an app is just another way um, of doing it. So let's take a look at, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Are you guys seeing, I see it says Air Server and MCPS. I am not seeing the app. So let's just take a look for the, in the meantime, at the, um, at the, image that's on the screen, um, and I'll try to get back over to my iPad in a minute. Um, so um, LAMP is um, a very, um, uh, it has a great deal of power. As you can see from the um, screenshot on the right, it has a great deal of vocabulary that can be winnowed down to a very simple level. So you can mask or hide all of the different icons to just have a little bit out. Um, I'm going to see if I can get back over to my iPad to really be able to show you what we're looking at. I am going to share my screen with you guys one more time, um, and we should be good to go. I really appreciate everybody's patience when technology is not as cooperative as we would like it to be. OK, so now you should be seeing um, the, let's move things around so you can actually see everything. So now you should be seeing the um, LAMP um, app, and I'm just going to play with it just a little bit, just so that if people haven't, um, aren't familiar with it at all, there are different levels in, of complexity that you can have, where it could be a one um, hit um, communication, or it can be more than one hit. So if I have it right now, if I want to be able to say like, I hit the like, and I have lots of different options in there, um, like, and it would say like. If I want to, though, go and make it at a much simpler level, um, I can go into my settings, and whoops, I can go into my, um, oops, let's get back to the vocabulary. There we go. Um, I can go into the one hit and um, have it be at a much simpler level. So I could go in, if I wanted to say like, I can just have it be at that right there. I can turn up the volume on my computer so you guys can hear that. If I want to read, I can have read on there. So it can say like read. Um, so at a very simple 
one hit level. I could also hide any of these buttons so we can mask and just have the vocabulary that we're working on. Um, and with that, there is a great app that's um, sort of an accompaniment to this that I'm going to take you over to see right now. That's by um, Pranky Romick. Um, and it is their AAC language lab and what we're taking a look at. Um, and it's to really help build that language um, at um, of that kind of that core word level of important vocabulary that kids need that they can say a whole lot with. So words like help more, stop and go. Let's take a look at that one. So this is where we're not in a communication mode, but we're in a language building mode. Um, and if I push, um, it's in the learn mode right now, so let's go back to that. If I push stop, it's going to help me learn about the word stop. And it's going to play a little um, should be playing a little video on there. I'm hearing it, but I'm not seeing it on the screen. Um, if I put go, it's going to watch the cargo. There should be there maybe something with the reflecting that it's not showing it on the screen there. So you see that it's beeping, so watch the cargo. So it's going to teach, and then it's going to ask you to then to select that. Let's go outside. So we keep our getting, we would be seeing a lovely video, a lovely animation, and it's going to ask me to keep hitting go, watch the car go, um, to be able to um, keep practicing that word. If I go over to, to learn that word, rather, watch the car go, if I I know I would still get to make it go. I need to have go. Watch the car go. If I hit go over to practice, then it's going to give me the opportunity where it says I want more, please, to practice a word. So the word more. And a video would come up. I need more. And it prompts a video to come up and giving that feedback. So a really nice way, I'm sorry that the videos aren't coming across on the screen. Um, make it go, it's asking me to find the word go. So opportunities to really practice with that. I'm going to um, switch back to the um, to stop sharing with you and go back to the PowerPoint for a moment. So I'll just wait for the PowerPoint to come back up on the screen. So that's really showing the AAC tool and an app that can be used to build language in preparation or while a child is working in that AAC app so that it really has those connections. And there's multiple apps from PRC that use those. I think the great thing about that is that it is going to build language regardless of whether you're using an AAC device or whether you're just um, working on those really important vocabulary words. And it's things like help more, stop, go, eat, drink, make, play, sleep, work, read, don't, no, stop. Um, that's at the very simple level. Then there's another app that will take you into um, um, multiple words. Um, we've looked a couple times at previous webinars about Go Talk Now um, from Attainment. And um, again, that is one that is highly customizable. Um, I'm going to just show you the screenshot there. So you can see we um, have it down to simply four. Um, I could have a video embedded in any of those. Um, and um, I can then have the core vocabulary that's overlaid on top of it so that the child's still working. That same really important language that we looked at with the PRC app of more, stop, go, um, want, uh, uh, to be able to, to do some requesting, some refusing, so some of those important um, language uh, actions, uh, those, those um, that kids really need to be able to own. Um, one other one that we're going to look at today, and again, these are simply um, kind of from very complex to, to simpler, um, just a couple, just three of the different ones that are out there, um, also kind of going down in price. So the PRC app runs for about $300. The um, GoTalk Now is about $75. And Sounding Board by AbleNet is totally free. Um, so I'm going to um, take you in to see that right now. So just to sort of see the um, you can see with the PRC, there's very little customization that needs to be done. You might simply be masking um, with the 
Go Talk Now, you can be highly, highly customizable. And what I find with the sounding board is there may be a little kind of a balance between. So I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen with you. And we're going to go into sounding board and take a look at it. OK, so you can see um, I have the different boards that are available. I'm going to, we're going to take a look at one that I created, um, and that's the core. And again, back to that same thing, go and stop. If, if the amount of things that I can communicate with go and stop are enormous, um, that we, I want to go outside, that I want to go make the car go, that I want to stop doing something, that I want you to stop doing something, a whole lot of value from that great place to start um, with that and um, be able to um, activate that. However, there are some built-in boards. Um, some of them are better than others, but the one that I like the most is the reading one. So I went into, these are the pre-loaded boards, um, and I think this reading one actually can serve for a whole lot more than reading, could be an even more expanded core. Um, I could actually put um, a go on there, perhaps instead of a turn the page, and that would mean, go would mean turn the page, if I really wanted to get, um, really think about expanding the um, communicative intent of a single word. It could mean a whole lot. Um, and so, so very, a very simple level that it's going to you know, turn the page. Who is that? Um, that we could get in. Let me do that. OK, so um, Stop. to be able to to be able to use this in a wide variety. So this was created as a reading page, but um, when we talk about that, what we're looking for criteria for apps and being open-ended, simply this page in and of itself can be really, really open-ended, way more than simply uh, reading. So I'm going to go back out. Um, whoops. I'm going to go back out and stop sharing my screen with you. We just got a preview of something I want to show you. And we'll put the PowerPoint back in there. So again, sounding board. So we saw three different apps um, for communication. Um, again, this is where we're really talking about that assistive technology piece, although I could certainly see how you could use um, features of these apps with any child in a universally designed for learning preschool setting where you are working on promoting and prompting language. Um, there are hundreds of AAC apps. Jane Farrell um, has an excellent comprehensive list of apps. The URL is there. Um, and then there is also the Call Scotland, which is a group out of the UK. Um, their wheel of AAC apps, which they just updated very, very recently. Um, and what I really want to say is that this was a sample. These were some simple ideas, but that really um, parents that are on and other professionals, I my my top advice when it comes to considering um, augmentative communication um, tools uh, for a child who, who um, may be in need of that is to work with your early interventionist and your speech language pathologist professional to determine the best app or other device to meet your child's needs. Um, this little tidbit does not, um, does not replace that, uh, that process. Um, we looked at the, um, the app from PRC. There's a nice little image that I couldn't get to come up on the screen before, but you can get an idea now of how um, working on that vocabulary, and this was one where it would be a two word of like turn and more um, to be able to get that. So um, I want to make sure we, I think everybody knows that language and literacy are um, irretrievably intertwined. Um, there's no way to separate those out. All the research says that the more you talk to the ch your child, um, the, the um, uh, better their early literacy skills are. The more that you read with the child, the better their language skills are. Um, and I love this. Um, I saw this, um, I think on Facebook or something, uh, this sign that was in a library. There is no app to replace your lap, read to your child. Um, and then to sort of temper that with reading your child doesn't have to be only print books. And in this, in this world of um, children who are growing up with an iPad, um, that uh, 
reading with your child might be reading um, on a device. It might also be reading a regular print book, but reading on a device is certainly an option. Um, so we're going to take a look at some apps. And what I would really like folks to do, and so you can start typing even as I um, show you the app, is tell me, reflect back on those um, criteria for the apps. And tell me how you think the app that I'm showing you meets, or, or maybe you think it doesn't, um, meet that criteria. So let's take a look at an app called um, This Is My Story. Um, and I'm going to pull that up. And I am going to share my screen with you. OK, so you guys should all be seeing my little, um, this is my story, and then the second part of the title of it is I'm sticking to it. Um, and we're going to take a look at a couple of the features of this. So we're going to look first at the make up your own story. So you get to pick a story, and you can see there's two there. If, you keep, if I keep swiping, I get all different um, choices in there. And let's say, I didn't really want to pick the look of the Irish, but if I change my mind, I can go into the backgrounds for any of these. Let's go with the Halloween theme. It's almost Halloween, right? Um, yes. Um, so I've got the different vocabulary, but I am going to go back out. I'm going to know. I'm going to make my own story, because I'm determined to get my Halloween background, a spooky night. So let's make a story about a spooky night. Um, and I have. The vocabulary that defaults to it, you can see here, is Halloween-themed vocabulary. But if I tug on my little friend the mouse there, um, I can get more vocabulary. It says are the backgrounds. Um, and I could switch to maybe I want some of the fall-themed vocabulary. Or maybe I want um, a school bus in there. So let's go back to my Halloween theme. And I can make a story about, hmm, who should we make the story about? I'm going to see, um, who, who should we make the story about? Let's see. Oops, I lost. There we go. Let's make the story about, um, let's make it about the cat. So I can take my cat. It's going to tell me the name. I can put it back if that's not what I wanted. Maybe I wanted the ghost. And until I put it in that little square where it sticks, and I think that's where they get the stick to it, um, that's where I'm at. And then it gives me that flashing arrow to say, OK, um, we're going to go on. So this is my story about the ghost. Um, and it's giving me the ghost said hello to. So who do I want the ghost to say hello to? Maybe the ghost is going to say hello to the spider. Once I choose him, I can drag him over there, and I get the option to keep going with my story. And then I've got that ghost again. Who is the ghost going to sing with? Maybe the ghost is going to sing with the monster. Uh, let's see, maybe, let's see, we're going to go to the next page. And maybe I want some different, you know, there's no reason that we can't have um, the, uh, the ghost play with the gingerbread. gingerbread. Um, so as you can see, we could be going through this until we get um, that the ghost laughed with uh, um, hmm, the skeleton. OK. Get this, get this finished up so that we can read it. The mummy. And he's going to run to the vampire. OK. So now I believe. And now he's going to say goodbye to, hmm, let's just go with the, the monster. So he's going to say goodbye to the monster and the end. So I can play back my story now. About the ghost. The ghost. Said hello to the spider. Hello. The monster. Saying the ghost. So I think you guys are getting the idea. I'm not going to finish it right now. Um, it would, it would um, go back to it, though. It would absolutely, though, let me then go into, I could go and just create a background. So again, um, some really nice open-ended things that I can get into. Um, not just the story, but we can play with all that vocabulary. 
Um, I'm going to flip back over to the webinar right now um, to the, um, so I can see what you guys are typing. And hopefully you guys are going to let me know if you thought, what you thought about that. Um, I'm going to exit this so it's not playing in the background. Okay, so let me know what you thought about that app. Um, do you think that it met the criteria? If I go back to, um, if I go back to what we were going to, what we reviewed, do you think that it that it um, it meets the criteria of an effective early childhood app? Um, what features of it? What did you see in there? I'm hoping somebody's there is going to start typing because I really want to hear your opinions of it. We could be more culturally diverse than just the monsters, um, but hopefully there would be some other um, free of stereotypes in some of the other pictures. OK, people are typing now. Um, Jackie says she's not sure if it promotes interaction with another person. So my response back um, with that is that if I was doing it with a child, I would be the one reading to the child and having them make the choices. Or you could have more than one child and having them get to make choices together. It's your turn. It's your turn. Um, definitely some movement. The story was controlled by the user. Um, so again, you know, this could be something that a child did completely by their own, but it could be something that would be more interactive. Um, the language development and the visual presentation, it was colorful, but it was fairly simple. It wasn't so visually um, overwhelming. I agree 100%. Um, and the connect between the word and the picture for older children, and um, for younger children too, exposing them to, um, to, that, uh, to that text. Um, along with the associated sound with it. Um, and great for sequencing practice, absolutely. Um, and think about the repetitive line in there, that that ghost was always there. So I could pair this with an augmentative communication tool where they got to say, what are you, what's there, the ghost, you know, that they are doing that, that reading. So I think it really does um, meet, meet um, that criteria. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toggle back to um, the right slide now um, and go to one of my other favorite, favorite um, apps that's out there. We're going to hope that we're still sharing my screen. Yes, I am. OK, so there is a um, wonderful app out there called Epic. Um, Epic is um, a website uh, and an app. Um, you can sign up as an educator um, for free. Um, it is a subscription for families. I think it's something very reasonable, like a couple of dollars a month for thousands and thousands of books, um, but it is free. The awesome thing is that it is absolutely free for educators. Um, and so we're going to um, toggle over. So I want you guys to be thinking about this, about that criteria, and what you like or maybe what you don't like about this app. Um, and we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Um, uh, so be thinking as I move over to um, share my screen with you. OK, um, so where am I? Let's just find the, I just need to find the right window so that you all are looking at the right window. I'm making sure, let me, I'm going to pull up and make sure I'm sharing with you. I lost my sharing connection for a moment. Um, OK. So we're going to punt since I lost my sharing connection. I'm going to try to get it back in just a second. But um, the, the um, app has um, access to thousands and thousands of books um, that are, um, oops, there we go. Did I get it back? Um, it has access to many, many books um, that you can um, view. There are many, uh, there are no bells and whistles to this. There are some that are um, 
there are some that are have read to, um, but many more that don't. Um, and so if you think about that, um, if you think about that, I'm sorry if I feel if I seem distracted. I'm just trying to get the um, my to mirror again. Um, if you think about that picture of your lap and it can't, here we go. Um, so are, you guys should be seeing this. Good. Um, let's go into Epic and pull it up. Okay, excellent. Um, and we'll go back into Mrs. Poss. That would be me. We'll sign in. You guys can all see my login. Um, and um, here we go. So we're going to browse. Um, and you can see it's giving me some recommended for me, some top picks. Um, and let's just take a look at um, Let's just take a look at bugs. I like bugs. I don't know about you guys, but I like bugs. Um, and just to take a look at this. So we've got um, a book. It's I can turn the pages with it. Um, I can tap on things, and nothing happens except it gets bigger. Um, this is a really no frills um, app. And I like it that it's no frills because I have to read this. If I'm sitting with a young child, I am going to read it to them. Caterpillars munch on tasty leaves. Where's the caterpillar? Oh, there's one. There's one. There's one. Let's make it bigger. Oh, do you see that little one there? So some nice things about being able to pull it up and closer back away. Oh, can you turn the page? Awesome. I could have two iPads going, and I could have my turn the page, my book reading one, or I could have printed out that board from Sounding Board and used it low tech and have the child interacting with me that way. Um, butterflies dance through the air. So it is very much an interactive book that happens to be on an iPad. Um, I can go back. I can favorite it so that um, it does give me some statistics. Um, so as a, as a teacher, as a parent, I can see how much time a child spent in a book. Um, and again, there are just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds um, of different books in there. You can see some of them are um, have that sound, and I can choose to have it read. About you, by Genevieve Cote. Stop. You're going too fast. So if a child wanted to read it independently with that, you could have that. But just like a paper book, um, it's really, it's really uh, without all its bells and whistles. Um, there are books at all different levels. So you can see there's lots of early childhood books. But there are absolutely um, books for um, at a higher level. I also like the fact if you're just thinking low incidence and not necessarily, or low readers, not necessarily young children, that there is some, um, there's some great stuff for um, there's some great stuff for, it doesn't have to be early childhood, the fruit, the Discover series and everything. So you could use it with a, a wider variety. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint and stop sharing my screen. And I'm, um, so Antonia, are there books in other languages? Yes, I believe that there are, um, there are Spanish in here. Um, I am not sure about other languages beyond that, um, but I believe there are Spanish books um, in there. And you can, it's also, it goes up to age 12 is the ages of books um, that are there. So there are, so you know, if you like books, there's nothing really not to like um, about Epic. I do want to move on to a few. Now we're going to talk about the book with the bells and whistles. Um, and. Um, uh, so David Wisner's Spot, if people are familiar with um, some of his other books, um, um, Flotsam is one of his, I believe another one is called Fly. Um, he is a master of the wordless picture book. And he um, created Spot not as a picture book, but as an app um, that takes that. And it's just a, an absolute piece of artwork. And um, uh, so I wanted to, I'm going to see if I can, if I play this video in, I'm going to ask Jackie, if I play this video in, let's see if it, I need to share my screen with you guys. OK, so I'm going to 
go and share my screen um, and and you guys are going to see the video. Imagine this as, as somebody navigating. What you're seeing is essentially navigating through the app. And it goes deeper and deeper. So just an amazingly um, beautiful app. I'm going to um, go into it really briefly. And you can see it's directing me to, so that was a video. Um, and let's close that particular. And you can see it's, it's giving me some directions as to what to do. Like it, if you saw those little things, and there's that ladybug and how we could get, I can go deeper into it. I'm on that ladybug spot. And oh my gosh, there's a whole other world in there. So again, just how um, kids choose to kind of get engaged in what's happening and all of the interactions and everything. So I'm going to um, leave it at that and encourage you to go and take a look at this um, really phenomenal um, app. Oh, OK, there we go. And. Um, and what do people think about that? I mean, it's not a book. It's not an app. I mean, it is an app. It's a book. It's a, um, but what do people think about that whole idea of spot? I think it's just uh, magical. Jackie's typing. Um, and if you want to pull the PowerPoint back up, that would be awesome. It's an interesting activity, promoting discovery. It absolutely is promoting discovery. And you can see how language could really be um, stimulated by it. I think that there would be certain kids and types of kids that would really be mesmerized by it. Um, and the key then would be in getting them to be interactive and engage um, in um, communication and conversation about it. But just a different way to approach um, a book, a picture book. OK, so um, Metamorphobed. I'm going to um, I'm going to give you guys a gift right now. Um, so through November 5th, this app is free. Um, it was a Starbucks iTunes pick of the week um, back in the summer, maybe. And it's still good. And it's good until, so you can, from that link, you can get um, this app um, for free. Uh, and it's not, a, not that it's a hugely expensive app afterwards, but it is another just beautiful, beautiful book. Uh, beautiful, beautiful app, rather. Um, and um, we're going to take a look at it. Um, I'm going to. Um, flip over to it. And um, I want you guys to, yep, I want you guys to tell me what you think about it. So get on, get on typing and um, give me some feedback on what you think of this particular app. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. And I'm going to open it. Um, um, I happened to be on the letter F last time I was playing with it. And we'll take a look at it. I'm just tapping on the screen in different places. I'm not really doing anything specific. I am right now just sort of swirling my finger on that. 
I'm tipping it backwards. Really the, oh my, look at that. Really it's responding. So as I have my finger on the fan blade and I'm swirling it around, it's swirling around. If I ruffle the feathers with my finger, it's the feathers are getting ruffled. If I tap the toes, it jumps up. If I tap the toes again, oh, it's telling me it's flying. If I tap the toes again, each toe that I tap, so you can really see, once that, st I could stay on this as long as I wanted, but once that star comes up, I have the option to go to the next letter. You have to get through the whole alphabet before you can go out of sequence, or I could only go back to the letters, to letters that I've already gone to. Um, so I'm kind of control, I am not kind of, I am controlling this. If I tap a letter, if I tap a flower, the flower moves. If I pull the flower up, it turns into ghosts. If I strum the guitar, it plays. So again, I could stay on this as long as I wanted to and do whatever I wanted. I can choose once the star goes up to get to the next letter. Um, so again, it's called Metamorphabet. I'm going to go back and stop sharing. just to have given you a taste of that. Um, and so um, SLP Deb loves the potential for discussion with the adult for development of rich vocabulary. It's showing up as a 399 app. Did not see a way to get it through the Starbucks link. I'll check that. I know when I checked it um, not too recently, um, you should be able, it said it until November. Fifth. So I will double check that and make sure I post it in the discussion section of the um, CTD of the of the course, um, and that we or we send it out as a, a link to get that. Um, this is one of those apps that mm, I have to sometimes put the iPad down because I keep playing with it um, afterwards. So it really is just a gorgeous, gorgeous app. Um, so. Now moving on, we just have a few minutes left, actually, to, um, I just want to show you one more, um, is literacy um, is more than just reading, um, it's writing also. So a fabulous app out there um, called, uh, from Scribble Press, called Scribble Press. There is a free version of this. The version I'm going to show you is a, it's like the um, few dollar version of it. Um, but what I really like about it is um, the way that it, can really support engagement. So I'm going to go back um, and share my screen. Um, this will be the last time I'm sharing my screen with you. Um, and um, so this is what it looks like. If I were to go into a new book, I could just draw a picture. It could be totally open-ended, and I could just draw a picture. And it's just a great drawing app with a lot of wonderful, I'm trying to click on it on my computer. That doesn't work. I have to click on it on my iPad. Um, but if I go into these books, I can get some real starters for kids that might um, need that. Let's just go into the All About Me. Um, and let's do just the All, let's just go with the All About Me. Um, it gives you kind of a Mad Libs effect. Not crazy Mad Libs, but fill in the blank. And I love this because this is the type of thing where you could sit with a child um, and get this information from them. If the child is able to type um, and fill in some, they could. So you might, in their name, you know, well, what letter does your name start with? And they'd be able to get to that. Um, or you could just be having them dictate to you. Um, you know, how many years old I am. Do you guys really want to know how old I am? There we go. Um, and I have blonde hair um, and blue eyes. And we'll stop there, and just to, for the sake, um, I, I can, it's going to prompt me to fill in, but I don't have to. Um, and I can keep going. And it's going to create my book. And then I get to go in and illustrate it. And I can use all of the um, markers that are available. There's tons and tons and tons of them. And I can add those to my toolbox. Um, or I can go in and I can use stickers. There is you know, in-apps purchase, and you can get more stickers. But you can also use the camera um, to be able to pull in pictures. So we could take a picture of me or use an existing picture. I can pull in different backgrounds. I could continue adding to this. So I could just be generating text, whatever I want, not necessarily from that. Um, and I can get into some uh, kind of other fun stickers and stuff that are add-ons. But just a really rich um, uh, app there. So I'm going to um, switch back for 
permanently now back to the screen, and I'd love to hear your opinions on the Scribble Press um, and what you think of it. And get the um, iPad, I mean the PowerPoint, back up. Um, so again, does it meet that criteria um, of a of a rich app? Is it open ended? Does it promote language? Does it promote interaction uh, for you? So Jackie is my She's my prompt for all of you guys to contribute. Um, while Jackie's typing, I'm going to go ahead and talk about all of these sort of, uh, anybody else, please give me your thoughts. So in that UDL classroom, we want to see that combination. This is a great, um, a great picture where it's really showing like you've got the book, and you've got manipulatives, and you've got an iPad app, and I would pair with it the communication board uh, to promote reading. That in that universally designed for learning classroom, it's all of those things um, that you're giving kids multiple um, ways of interacting with um, language and literacy tools, um, and you are giving kids multiple ways to be engaged, and you're giving multiple, you're providing multiple means of input to them. So um, allows for creativity and language development. They can customize the plot, absolutely. Um, and, uh, re and have to go, but great presentation. So anybody that was getting credits, thanks Regina, Regina too. Um, there's, um, if you're participating in the course for CEUs, there's a discussion, two discussion questions and an activity. So the discussion is, um, how can you integrate eBooks and other literacy and language activities using technology into your learning environment? And how does the early learning policy statement that you constructed in lesson one support your integration of these apps? And then the instructional activity two is to evaluate and create reviews for three apps for how they support communication, language, and literacy. So you can use those criteria that we've been discussing for the last hour um, to talk about that. Um, it looks like you have to log into the Starbucks network for the apps. We're sorry. There seems to be an issue downloading. OK. Um, so we can. you may have to just go in through the Starbucks uh, network. Thank you, Maureen, for researching that. We'll see if we can get it. And I actually have been in contact with the Metamorphobet developers, so I'll see if they can't fix that and get me some codes um, to send out to people um, uh, since, since we featured their fabulous app um, in, our, in our webinar. So that again, that instructional activity for creating reviews. Um, if you want some um, good reviews to look at, Common Sense Media is a great um, place, although I don't think they put quite the emphasis on um, on interactivity um, and open-endedness that I do. Um, so the recorded webinar is going to be available in the library. Um, you can get your certificate. Um, I think Jackie can tell you exactly how you can get your certificate. Um, if you all would like to meet me in person, I would love to meet you. If anybody is coming to um, ATIA in February in Orlando, I'm doing a full day pre-conference on universal design for 21st century learning. We're going to look at things from pre-K on up through 12th, um, and then a bunch of regular sessions. And please come back next week. We are doing the final webinar on Monday, um, and it's going to be on, not on a Tuesday, on Monday because um, I'll be flying to Indianapolis on Tuesday, um, to su on supporting play and problem solving. So we're going to look at early math skills, play skills, um, in the context of a UDL early learning environment. So thank you guys. Great, Jamie. I look forward to seeing you. I'll be there. You'll be where? Will you be at the webinar or will you be at ATIA? Um, and Orlando, yay! Jamie, come see me. Introduce. You're welcome, Pam. Um, and the survey, don't forget the survey. Thank you, Emily. You can click on the link to do the survey. I really appreciate you guys spending the last hour with me, being patient with my technology um, issues. Um, and enter your email address for a certificate. Oh, great, Stacy! Please come find me at ATIA. Come to my pre-conference or come to one of the regular sessions. Um, I'll actually be doing a live version, sort of a compilation of the three of these, and I'm going to have some really amazing swag and giveaway for the Swipe Generation one, um, some really awesome apps and hands-on manipulatives that go with them. So I'm very, very excited about that. So come and see me in Orlando.
I'll hang on for just another minute. Um, great, Bernadine. Um, please, you, my email's here, so if your speech therapist has questions, um, let me know and be happy to chat. Um, and I will, uh, I will let people log out. We've still got a few people on there. I look forward to seeing any of your, um, any of your comments. Um, and I hope I see um, all of you